Let me strive every moment of my life to make myself better and better to the best of my ability that all may profit by it. Let me think of the right and lend all my assistance to those who need it with no regard for anything but justice. Let me take what comes with a smile without loss of courage. Let me be considerate of my country, of my fellow citizens, and my associates in everything I say and do. Let me do right to all and wrong to no man. That is the oath of Doc Savage. Yes, my friends, finally, at long last, after many promises, it's time to talk about this guy, Doc Savage. Doc Savage, the pulp adventurer's hero. You could also call him a pulp adventure superhero because he was uh, one of the prototypes for the superheroes which proliferate in our comic books and our theaters today. Doc Savage came before all those. He came before all of those superheroes. And boy, did those comic books steal a lot from this. I'm telling you. So this is Doc Savage. Doc Savage, who was created uh, for the pulp magazines for Street and Smith. Uh, the premier issue of Doc Savage arrived on the newsstands in March of 1933. Street and Smith wanted to come up with an adventure hero to uh, go along with the Shadow, who was really popular. So they came up with Doc Savage. Now, Doc Savage was officially created by Henry W. Ralston, John L. Nanovic, and Lester Dent. Lester Dent, who wrote most, almost all of the Shadow novels. He didn't write them all, but he wrote most of them. And he, he wrote under the house name of Kenneth Robeson, Every issue, every pulp issue of Doc Savage would come out and uh, the novel, whatever the novel was, would be written by Kenneth Robeson. Uh, Doc Savage was a fascinating character. Like I said, he was a prototype for the superheroes uh, that we know today. Here's another exciting Doc Savage hanging on the car there. Um, Doc Savage was many things. He was a scientist. He was a surgeon. He was an inventor. He was a detective. He was an athlete. He was all kinds of things. If you could think of it, Doc Savage was it. Because he was the ultimate in physical and mental perfection. He knew martial arts. He could fight all kinds of ways. He knew every weapon on earth. This guy, he knew pretty much everything Doc Savage did. Doc Savage, this, his, his real identity uh, is Clark Savage Jr. You see, there was a guy called Clark Savage Sr. And he was just sort of a sick psychopath because what he did, Clark Savage Sr., he took himself and a group of scientists and when poor little... Savage here. Poor little Clark Savage Jr. was just an infant. They started training him to be a physical and mental marvel. They trained him every day of his little life until he became the greatest at just about everything. He's sort of a prototype for many superheroes. You see a lot of Batman in here, actually. When we think of the pulp prototypes of Batman, we most often think of the Shadow, with good reason. He was a creepy, scary guy who fought criminals. But when you think of how Batman actually became Batman, he went out of his way to train to become a, to become the greatest detective the world has ever known, to become a physical marvel, to be able to fight anybody in combat. I mean, he trained himself up to be a superhero. 
that is straight from Doc Savage, only Doc Savage was even more intense because he had no choice in the matter. He was forced to do this by his dad, who was a nut, I think. I mean, he, he never, I don't think, referred to his father as a psychopath, but I'm kind of getting the idea he might have been a little nuts, this guy's dad. Well, his insanity was our gain because this guy saves the world all the time and is always preventing horrible destruction. He's always preventing crimes and other and terrorism and all kinds of stuff. If there's a problem, this is the guy to go to. I'm telling you, Doc Savage. This guy had adventure after adventure after adventure. I mean, he was something, this guy, Doc Savage. He had to be. He was trained that way since he was just a little kid. Like I said, what you gonna do, man? Good thing he took to it, the Man of Bronze. He was called the Man of Bronze because he looked like a bronze statue when he just stood there. And uh, this guy had pulp adventure after pulp adventure, Doc Savage. He was very popular, and he was for a long time. He died out when all the other pulp magazines died out. Um, but for a while, you could always go to your newsstand and get a copy of Doc Savage and just have a great old time. Now, Doc Savage did not work alone. He had his own uh, office built. He had like, was it the 82nd story? I probably should have checked that. I've got uh, the 86th floor. I've got the Wikipedia here because I didn't want to write down all the agents' names and then I didn't want to get them wrong. So I got the Wikipedia, which I'm just going to read a little bit about. Uh, first of all, the Doc Savage set up base on the 86th floor of the world-famous New York skyscraper. Uh, they never said it was the Empire State Building, but it was the Empire State Building. He had the whole 86th floor, and that's where his base was. Now, all good pulp adventure guys had agents. The Shadow had agents. So Doc Savage had to have agents, too. And he had a whole bunch of agents that worked with him uh, to fight injustice because that's his whole reason for being. That's why he was invented. He was pretty much invented. And his whole reason to be, for being is to fight injustice. And so he, he has aides that help him out with this. He's got Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Blodgett, Monk Mayfair, better known as Monk, uh, an industrial chemist. Monk looks like an ape. Monk is always given a hard time because he looks like an ape. He's a person, but he kind of looks like an ape. He's an unpleasant looking fellow, but he has a great personality. Uh, Stan Lee kind of, when Stan Lee made the Beast, the Beast is sort of like a more attractive Monk uh, when the Beast first shows up in the X-Men. Uh, Monk is great, but Monk has a hard time with Brigadier General Theodore Marley Ham Brooks. Uh, another one of Doc's agents, and him and Monk are always going at it. Uh, he is an accomplished attorney. He is the best-dressed guy in the world. He has a sword cane, because all these snooty types have to have a, a sword cane. And uh, his blade is dipped with a fast-acting anesthetic. Puts you to sleep, this guy. Uh, but we also have more agents. Those are the agents, those two, that you see the most. Uh, and particularly when, when Doc Savage, at the end of his run of adventures, a lot of his other agents just never show up. They finally figured out, you know what, we really don't need any other agents because Doc Savage can pretty much do anything on his own. But we do see a lot of Ham and Monk because those are the entertaining two. But he got some more agents than that. He's got Long Tom, Major Thomas J. Long Tom Roberts, an electrical engineer. Long Tom, a skinny, sickly looking guy who's an electrical engineer working for Duck Savage. He's got uh, William Harper, L Johnny Little John, an archaeologist and a geologist. Uh, you wouldn't think you'd need one of those as an adventurer, but you'd be surprised. Uh, he also has a cousin who shows up, Patricia Pat Savage, who has Doc's bronze skin, golden eyes, and... Uh, bronze hair and she's always wanting to go out on adventures and Doc's always like you can't go out with me you're a girl 
And she says, screw you, I'm going to go out on adventures too. And yeah, so she shows up in a lot of an adventure, a lot of adventures. Pat. And so, you know, if you're in real trouble, you'd go to Doc Savage. And, you know, adventure would await. And boy, did he have a lot of adventures. Uh, this is one of the more recent publications of Doc Savage. I don't know that these are ebooks yet. I kind of think they're not. The last time I checked, I didn't see any of the older Doc Savage adventures as ebooks. They do have some new ones that are being written by other non Lester Dent people. Um, Lester Dent, by the way, there's a lot to say about Lester Dent. Because he didn't just write this. He didn't just do Doc Savage. He did a lot of stuff and he had a fascinating life. I've decided when I was putting this video together that I'm going to have a whole other video just on Lester Dent. Why not? It's my channel. I can do that. Because he's just too interesting to cram in here with Doc Savage. So I'm going to be talking about Lester Dent another time. Hopefully I won't make you months... Make, ah, hopefully I won't make you wait for months before I get to Lester Dent. But this is one of the more recent uh, publications. This was from Nostalgia Adventures. Uh, and there's Doc Savage in his bathing suit hanging out with the skeleton. Why? I don't know. I guess you'd have to read the story to find out. But great pulp magazines. And the Nostalgia Adventures ones are cool because they reproduce the original um, pulp magazine art on the covers. And on the inside, they kind of do the same thing. They reproduce some original uh, pulp art. And, and there's quite a, quite a bit of it in there. All of it is uh, formatted uh, just the way uh, it is uh, in the original pulp magazine. And they often have a little thing about Lester Dent. There's Lester Dent there. Just look at that guy. That gives you kind of an idea what this guy was like, just this photograph. He was awesome. You're going to want to, even if you don't really care, you're going to want to watch and hear about Lester Dent because, man, that guy was interesting. So pulp, uh, during the pulp era, Doc Savage was, was a huge character. And as soon as comic books started showing up, they swiped everything they could from Doc Savage. Even... My favorite superhero of all time, the saintly Superman. Even Superman stooped to stealing the idea for Doc Savage's Fortress of Solitude. Yes, the Fortress of Solitude, that thing we think Superman has, and he does. It was Doc Savage's Fortress of Solitude first. Doc Savage had a Fortress of Solitude. But once the pulp magazines were going, they were like, no one's going to remember Doc Savage. All his magazines are all moldering away. We can steal that idea for a fortress of solitude. A bunch of ideas, including plots to stories, were swiped from pulp magazines. Uh, and that was just one of the more blatant ones. Uh, and we were reminded of this because in the 60s, uh, Doc Savage returned in a series of uh, paperbacks. And Doc Savage was redesigned from looking like this guy by an artist named James Bama, or Bama, I'm not sure which. And James Bama, he worked with a, with a model, an actor named Steve Holland, who, who does modeling and did modeling for a lot of uh, paperback art because he was just a rugged, handsome guy. And Doc Savage was, re, was uh, reborn to looking like this this is the Doc Savage with the extreme widow's peak and the torn up shirt. The torn up khaki shirt. Um, as a, when I was growing up, this is how I knew Doc Savage. I didn't even know he was a pulp guy. I just saw these paperbacks lying everywhere. And I thought that's what they were. But they just reprinted all the Doc Savage pulp stories uh, with great covers. This is the most Doc savage -y cover I could find. We just get a good look at this new character design. And they just reprinted all these old adventures and they were a hit. They're still just as entertaining as a paperback as they were in the pulps. 
People loved him in the 60s and 70s, just like they liked him back then. I don't know why his shirt is always torn up, but his shirt is always torn up. I don't know if he just, like, goes out like this. He's just like, you know what? My shirt's going to get torn up anyway. I might as well wear just wear my torn up shirt. But, yeah, he's he's always has a tough enough time that his his shirt is ripped to hell. And that's how you... It's one of the classic paperback Doc Savage things is that he always has the torn up shirt. I don't know that we ever see any of his guys more than a couple times on these paperback covers. Pretty much Doc Savage and not his agents is, is always the focus of the covers. These were published in a few different ways. They were published like these and then later on uh, they did these big omnibus volumes where you have four Doc Savage adventures in one paperback book. Look at him. He's a grim looking fella. Oh, there are his agents back there, right behind Doc Savage's head. I knew they showed up at some point. There they all are, hanging out there behind Doc Savage's weird widow's peak. Now, these adventures were pretty great because they were heavy on action. The characters were really entertaining. Lester Dent didn't seem to care how wild the stories got because they got wild. They didn't take themselves too seriously either. Uh, there's a lot of humor in these books. And part of the humor is just the ridiculousness of some of the situations that he goes into. And some of the wacko villains and bizarre, bizarre menaces that he goes up against, Doc Savage. Because he goes up against quite a bit of weird stuff, this guy. Um, he really was a hero like no one else. They made a really bad movie of Doc Savage. I think it was in the 60s. It was either the late 60s or early 70s. I can't remember. I try to mentally block that film from my mind. It, I always felt like they could have done a better movie and that they could do a better movie. But Doc Savage probably isn't a big enough hero to merit it nowadays. He's more of a nostalgia item. Uh, people do still read Doc Savage. I do see things about Doc Savage now and, now and then on YouTube, but not very often. But I, 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 th I don't think he's been forgotten, though. And he used to be huge for a while. He had his own radio show, which, as far as I know, not a single episode survives. Let me know if I'm wrong, but I don't think so. So Doc Savage, fascinating character. Very entertaining. If you ever get your hands on some of these... Yeah, you will be entertained. This is fun stuff. And I do have some doubles of these. I'm going to do another giveaway at some point. Um, probably not tomorrow's giveaway, but another one in the future because I really have to go through these and then just give away some Doc Savage that I have doubles of. Uh, yeah, I've got something cooked up for that. So that'll be in the future. But in the meantime, if you do run across any Doc Savage, man, pick it up. You'll see him in old, you, you'll see Doc Savage in used bookstores. Uh, you'll, st you'll still see some of these floating around. Um, yeah, they're, they're well worth your time. He's a lot of fun, Doc Savage. So there you go, my long-awaited Doc Savage video. And now you just have to wait for the Lester Dent video. Because like I said, that guy, he's worth talking about on his own. The guy who wrote almost all of these stories. So there you go, I will see you next time we've got another giveaway tomorrow where i'm giving away different stuff so that'll be fun it's always fun to give stuff away and then i've got a frightful top 10 this saturday okay guys you have a great day